Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mahoney Arena on the campus of Fairfield University for a rivalry renews tonight. The Fairfield Prep Jesuits host the Falcons of Fa Fairfield Ludlow High School here on the campus of Fairfield University. I am Nick Waltieri, joined alongside by Tommy Berry. And Tommy, we got a good one. Yeah, we do. Um, this, this is a giant game. Every single time we have one of these matchups, it is, it is huge, always huge. Rival Fairfield teams playing each other. A lot of these kids growing up played each other since like day one. Personally, I have with a lot of the Ludlow kids and um, it's, it's, uh, it really means a lot. You're, we're gonna see a lot from uh, Will Kane versus Charlie Jones. Uh, they've been playing a lot since they've been uh, younger. Uh, a lot of key players to look out for is Tate and Charlie Mahoney, the brother duo for Ludlow. They've been absolutely tearing it up this year as both of them have created a bigger, a bigger role for themselves on this team. Nick, who should we look out for on prep? We should really be looking for number three, the senior captain, Jack Stocknoff, really filled the role as uh, the other captain, Aiden Crotty, number four, suffered a season-ending injury that we talked about last stream against Xavier. Aiden Crotty suffered a tear of his ACL and MCL in the first scrimmage of the season, so really hard to, uh, you know, just lose a guy like Aiden Karate, a guy who is in a really big leadership role this year, but there's been really, uh, there's been some like, you know, Nick Alvarez has really stepped into a yeah, role 100%. this year, and uh, also Alex Scott, number 23, has stepped into a huge role. So it's been, uh, it's been really good for prep to just, uh, to, you know, get some, uh, you know, other leaders on the squad that's lacking, you know, in Karate, a big role. Yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, we can't, we definitely can't doubt Lameek Black, the sophomore, who absolutely tore it up in the second half for that Xavier game and almost brought Prep back with his defensive and his relentless ability to finish without being scared. And now we are seeing both teams getting introduced. Game is just about to start. And again, yeah, Aiden Karate, going to be talking about him a lot. He was just such a big role in this team, such a hard worker, really brought the morale up. And losing him this season is absolutely devastating. So here are the starting lineups. And that is the starting lineup for Fairfield Ludlow. Tate Mahoney definitely gonna be a playmaker tonight, the senior. 100%. We have number 23, Alex Scott. Nick Alvarez, number five, the senior. Number 15, William Kaner Kane. Number three, the captain, Jack Stocknoff. Number 12, the junior, Matthew Feeney. The Jesuits, since that loss to Ludlow, picked up a big dub over North Haven by a score of 57-47 here at Mahoney. Uh, I was away, so I couldn't be at that one, but, uh, but a big win there for Prep. And please be silent to the national anthem.
And there it is, folks. In case you missed it at the beginning, I don't know if we had our headsets plugged in correctly, but welcome to Mahoney Arena on the campus of Fairfield University as a rivalry renews, a crosstown rivalry. The Jesuits of Fairfield Prep host the Falcons of Fairfield Ludlow High School here on the campus of Fairfield University. I am Nick Waltieri, joined alongside by Tommy Berry. And uh, this one is gonna be quite a treat here in the first round of the Holiday Classic, a Fairfield Prep annual tournament here in the wintertime. And this is gonna be a real big one, folks, if you did not hear me before, but something we really need to look out for on this Ludlow team is their elite managers, Rhett Davies and Jonathan Steckloff, really keeping the team together up at the end of that bench over there. And uh, here we go for the tip-off. Nick Alvarez and Porter Davis Watley or Waitley. And Nick Alvarez wins the tip. It's Stocknoff right side. There we Hands see it to that. Kane. There we see that Kaner. He Charlie gets, Jones. Wow. Kane misses it. Charlie gets that rebound. Here's Tate Mahoney, as we were talking about before. Back to Jones. Back to Mahoney. Inside to the other Mahoney, Charlie. Charlie. Fade away. No good. Rebound. Up. And no good from Porter Davis Waitley. And that's no, out of bounds. No good there, out of bounds, Fairfield Prep. And there, as I caught at the beginning, Charlie Jones versus Will Kane, a lot of a very big physical matchup we will be seeing. Here is Jones, top key, right side. Passed a miscommunication from Davis Waitley and Tate Mahoney. Costly turnover, Jesuit possession. Here's, ball. here's Kane bringing it up the court, left side. Inside to Feeney. Feeney thought about the three. Says, pass it over to Scott. Scott to Kane. Kane driving in. Pass over to Stocknoff. Stocknoff. He's going to hand it to right to Alvarez, who trips. Oh, what a pass! Stocking off from, a, from Feeney. That's hey, bang! Bang! Great passing there by Fairfield Prep to get that giant three from Jack Stocknoff. Great pass from Alvarez to kick it over to Feeney. Feeney, nice, simple pass to Stocknoff. Stocknoff is not going to miss that. Here's Jones. Mahoney. Tate. Mahoney. Going inside. Mahoney, step back on Alvarez. That's no good. Rebound, though, by Juan Charlie. Sherbina Castro. And uh, just apologize, if I, apologize if I botched that name, but that was a, that was a bucket from Ludlow. I believe that was Charlie Jones. No. It was uh, Mr. Whiteley. Whiteley. And there it is, Stocknoff putting all five points for prep on the board. A little miscommunication there with Charlie Jones. Porter Davis Whaley is going to be their big man down low. Stocknoff with a nice elbow jumper. Here's Charlie Jones over to Sherbina Castro. Sherbina Castro, nice spin move on Stocknoff. Sherbina Castro kind of stuck in that paint area. Kicks it out to Jones, uh, to Mahoney. Mahoney driving on Scott. Mahoney trying to get past Scott. It's not going to happen. Mahoney locked up by Matt Feeney. Feeney, six seconds on the shot clock, finding Davis Waitley. Waitley driving in on Alvarez. No good as the shot clock expires. Great defense there from Nick Alvarez to work that shot clock. And now it is prep ball. Great defensive presence there by... Nick Alvarez, you're going to be seeing a lot there this season and have seen a lot of it, especially from number 23, Nick Scott, who really showed up in the Xavier game and is now playing very well. Feeney to Kane. Kane locked up by Jones. Oh, Tate Mahoney steals that ball and goes in for the dunk and misses. And that's out of bounds, Jesuit possession. Oh my goodness, the Tate Mahoney almost threw that through the roof. And the chirps are flying from the Fairfield Prep bomb squad on Tate Mahoney. 
really good sized bomb squads or student sections from both teams. Prep kind of actually looks pretty even right now, but Ludlow's showing up really well right now. Here's Feeney right side. Top key to Alvarez, who's gonna pull from there and does not get the bounce, but it's Feeney blocked by Mahoney. Big rebound there by Feeney, but unfortunately not able to get it up. It's Jones driving in on Kane. Nice outdoor pass to Timmy O'Neill. Charlie Jones and Will Kane, as I have said multiple times, are just gonna keep going at it. Great pass to Bonilla. Bonilla. I mean, Alvarez, hey! Uh, that was a close three there. But again, Charlie Jones and Will Kane have played with each other their entire childhood. And they both know every single move in each other's bag. It is gonna be extremely physical and a lot of trash talk. Yeah, these two crosstown schools, a lot of prep kids from Fairfield. A lot of people, a lot of prep kids went to Roger Ludlow Middle School. But here we go. Kane driving left side on Jones. Jones all over Kane, not letting him get by anything. And that forces a turnover, Ludlow possession. Close game here, 5-4. Jesuits leading by one. Ludlow's showing a lot of resilience. It really, it's really a tight matchup considering these two schools know each other so well. Ludlow and Prep goes back generations as a big town, a big time crosstown rivalry. Sherbina Castro no good on the layup. Stocknoff with the rebound. Up to Alvarez, and that's tipped away by O'Neal. O'Neal, the lone freshman, or no, one of two freshmen on the squad, along with Gavin Mertz, who we have not seen yet. Number 13, Gavin Mertz. Great it's, tip pass there, just absolutely beautiful play there. Tommy, obviously you grew up with a lot of these kids being from Fairfield. Uh, what insight do you have about this Ludlow squad? I mean, they're gonna play physical, they're fast. They have a lot, they have almost everything on this team. They have size, they have sh the shooting ability, they have the driving ability. It's just really gonna be a lot. Personally, I grew up and played with Will Kane and Charlie Jones and I can both lock them up. However, in this game it is going to be giant because of the teams that they have around them. Davis Waitley turns away Lameek Black on that drive. Ludlow possession. Here is Timmy O'Neill, number 15, getting some good playing time as a freshman here on this Ludlow varsity squad. O'Neill driving in, passes to Davis Waitley. Puts it up, no good, good defense from Lucas Kiger who has just checked in, and Nick Alvarez. There's Kane passing, Stocknoff right side. Stocknoff slips, travel, travel. on Stocknoff as Kiger swishes that three that did not count. Unfortunately slipped on that play, Stocknoff, and uh, called it as a travel. Big press defense here by Prep on Fairfield Lobo. A lot of Prep fans in the uh, stands tonight, especially because it's an alumni gathering uh, alumni, you know, night here at Mahoney for all Fairfield Prep alumni. Stocknoff steals it from Mahoney. Stocknoff passes oh. Alvarez. O'Neal with a good hustle play to get back stops a fast break opportunity. You know, O'Neal has had two really good hustle plays that have brought that have stopped easy buckets. So he has had a great defensive presence so far in this game. Kiger from three, off the mark. Prep possession, Prep. knocked out of oh. bounds by Tate Mahoney. Good hustle play there by Will Can. Three pointer, Can that's Kiger off the mark from three. That's two shots from the corner that have not fallen for Lucas Kiger. Here's the uh, here's Charlie Mahoney moving in. And that he Ooh. throws that away, Jesuit possession. He misses that and unfortunately throws it back out of bounds on the recovery. Lameek Black inbounds it. Kiger back to Lameek Black. And it's Lameek Black passes to Stocknoff. Back to Black. Lameek Black over to Stocknoff, left side. Dribbles top center. Over to Black, driving left side. And hey! that's called no good. No good. 
Foul on the floor, it looks like. It seemed like it was a blocking foul on number 15 on Ludlow. Timmy O'Neill. Checking in for Ludlow. Oh, here's a replay on that Lemmy Black drive. As you see, he gets inside, but a block, a clear block on Timmy O'Neill. Quite unfortunate. Might have been Charlie Jones, actually, but. Here's Lucas Kiger to Lamique Black. Charlie Jones has been playing a very good defense. He's everywhere. Kiger st thought about pulling up, and Timmy O'Neill knocks that away. Good read of that pass. Inside, turns it right over to Alvarez. Up to Kiger, who's going to stop and pop from three. Bang! Hey! Big three there by the sophomore, Lucas Kiger. Lucas Kiger, big three. And the Jesuits take an 8-4 lead. 140, just about 140 left in the first quarter here. Really exciting first quarter. Inside is Porter. It's Davis Wiley who makes prep pay on the post. Yeah, great move there by number 11. There's Cooper Callahan, number 10. First action we've seen of him today. Over to Lameek Black. Lameek Black inside to Alvarez. Pulls from three. No good off front rim again. That's twice now for Nick Alvarez. Unable to finish from beyond the arc. And Callahan, good reads the pass. And he steals it right back for prep. Here's Lameek Black. Over to Stocknoff. Stocknoff. Turnaround jumper. Nothing but air there for Stocknoff. Charlie Jones with his speed getting all the way down court. Timmy O'Neill with a pretty reverse. Great play here. Plays by the freshman, Timmy O'Neill. I did not expect to see th these kind of plays coming out of this freshman. Oh, and he, me, he stumbles. Oh, but me, oh. Alvarez hit a play! Great offensive rebound by Alvarez. And what a Great put back there. Here's the replay on that amazing put back by Alvarez fighting through Davis Waitley and puts it right back in and one. Here is he misses Alvarez. Misses a shot, unfortunately. And Ludlow that, ball. Ludlow ball. Tommy, really exciting here to see this rivalry that has been renewed after a couple years, I believe, or a year and a half or so. Yeah, you know, there's always uh, a little bit of tension between Prep and Ludlow kids. And, um, I mean, this is going to be the culmination, the culmination of that beef in this game. David, uh, it's Tate Mahoney over to Charlie Mahoney. Mahoney making a move on Callahan, drives inside. No... Seems like it on was. On the floor. On the floor, not a, not a shooting foul. Did not go up in time. Unfortunately, not a shooting foul, as Nick said, for no the junior number two, Charlie Mahoney. Charlie and Tate only a year apart. Pretty cool to see that brother duo, duo on a varsity basketball squad like Ludlow. That's a three off the mark. There by number 23, Arlo Solinger. And that ends the first quarter with the score, Jesuits 10, Falcons 8. Tommy, what do you think of the first quarter? You know, I'm going to admit, I feel like it was, a little bit, uh, it was a little bit sloppy at first for both teams just getting into it. And then as it went on, the Ludlow just played such amazing and beautiful defense against the Jesuits. And so did the Jesuits against Ludlow, which made the score only get to 10 to 8. But some very notable performances so far have been from Mr. Lucas Kiger with a giant 3-4 prep to stop the drought. And Jack Stocknov that had the first initial five points for the Jesuits. How are you feeling about Ludlow? I mean, Ludlow coming out of the gate pretty good. Someone who surprised probably all of us was Timmy O'Neill. 100%. Got in the game, a freshman, one of two on the squad, and actually just took over 
this game for the last two minutes of that first quarter. I mean, going in, getting a couple steals, getting that pretty reverse on that cut and uh, looking for him to make some more big plays. We haven't seen him shoot a three yet, but you know we'll see what happens. And yeah, we definitely will, but as you said, it's Timmy O'Neill, what a defensive press. Like, all the hustle plays he's been making, I actually gotta give it to the freshman. He's been playing extremely well, and with all this pressure, I mean, that's, that's something really admirable, and he's coming right back out on the floor. Juan Sherbina Castro out there with Tate Mahoney, Charlie Mahoney, Timmy O'Neill and Arlo Solinger. And for prep, it's Kiger, Callahan, Kane, Garrity. First, we, first we've Ooh. seen of him today. And Black. Charged there by John Garrity. Picking up right where he left off against Xavier. Drawing those charges is his specialty. That's, that's, that's such a great play. Like, seriously. Black. Hands it to Kane to start this to get Prep's first possession of the second underway, guarded by O'Neal. O'Neal guarding the experienced Kane, which is a interesting move, but seems to be a good one as there, as 15 on 15. Here's Callahan for three, off the mark on that three. Say, oh, Sherbina Castro saves it right to Charlie Mahoney, up to Solinger, back to Ch Mahoney. Mahoney thought about pulling the three. Over to Timmy O'Neill. O'Neill looking for any room. Kiger all over him. Here is Tate Mahoney inside to Sherbina Castro. Sherbina Castro. Outside Mahoney for three. Tate Mahoney! Huge three there by the senior Tate Mahoney. We're going to be seeing a lot more threes like that in the rest of this game. It's actually pretty cool to see some of these uh, these kids that have played together for a lot of their lives come back together playing against each other in high school. Here's Callahan for the three. That's and he good. Drains it. Don't give Cooper Callahan space. That was an unfortunate error from this Ludlow squad, giving Callahan that space and, like you said, Tommy, nothing but net. Yeah, don't they don't believe in the in Callahan's ability to shoot him. Should be in a cash row inside to. Charlie Mahoney, Callahan guarding him, and Callahan fouls Mahoney. That was a close call there. Could have been a steal, but nonetheless. Reaching foul there. Red out theme for Prep, blue out theme for Ludlow. That's Charlie Mahoney. Dribbles back outside to Jones. Jones inside, finds Shabina Castro underneath, loses the ball, finds Solinger for three. Bang! Very unfortunate there for the Jesuits. Feeney thought about the three driving in. Thought he, everyone thought he walked, but it's up to Florida Mahoney. Tate Mahoney loses the ball Good. and that's a foul on Lameek Black. Seems like a good foul there on, on Lameek Black, or from Lameek Black onto Tay Mahoney because that seemed like it could have been a very easy bucket for Fairfield Ludlow. Got a lot of our alumni up in the nosebleed seats, but here is, it's Ludlow with a 14-13 lead. Four, 540 left in the half. Here's Kane with a nice rebound. Driving up the floor. And that's taken away by Charlie Jones. Charlie Mahoney inside. And that's a block on Garrity. And one for Charlie Mahoney. Very unfortunate. Garrity trying that charge again, but just couldn't get it. And we saw a big steal there from Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones broke the school record for the most amount of steals in a game as a sophomore. So his defensive presence is going to be huge against this prep team. How many steals was that? Do you know? I, I think it might have been eight, seven or eight. That's pretty crazy for high school basketball. 100%. Mahoney swishes the free throw.
These two bomb squads going at it right now. Here's Stocknoff. Stocknoff fakes on Tate Mahoney, driving inside Garrity. Garrity gonna lay it up and off the mark, rebound Sherbina Castro. That was a great move there. Up to Jones, Jones going at Alvarez. He's gonna back up a little bit. He's gonna hand it off to Solinger. Oh, hey! blocked away! What a block by Stocknoff! That was Garrity. Oh, Garrity, my bad, my bad. Get the two boys mixed up. Garrity, a vicious block on Solinger there. Turns him away. And the prep bomb squad loving that. Inside. And that, it's a foul on Nick Alvarez, holding Tate Mahoney. You know, holding is a big thing that's been called on a lot this high school season. Ref's really looking out for it. Charlie Jones inbounds it to Tate Mahoney. Tate Mahoney, and he's all over. And that's Fairfield prep ball. What a play, double team there, leading Tate Mahoney to lose the ball. Inbounds to Feeney, back to Stockton Gonna s settle it for a minute. And he's gonna hand it right back to the point guard, Kane. Kane, Charlie Jones playing vicious defense on Kane. As you, as you said, Tommy, they know each other very well. Oh, kick out. Feeney in, driving inside, out of control there. Feeney gets it back, finds Kane for three. Off oh, the mark. Just off. Up the floor Little. to Jones. Inside to Solinger. Oh, ah! vicious block again. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. That's the second one. Garrity turning oh away Solinger. Garrity looking like Cleveland LeBron. These chase down blocks, oh my. And as you would say last game, here's the replay. A vicious block by John Garrity. Arlo Solinger turned away for the second time. Oh my goodness. Mahoney pulling up from deep, and that's a bang. Three pointer from Charlie Mahoney. Timeout prep, 20 to 13 Ludlow. That was a crazy second quarter. Great defensive effort by Mr. John Garrity. Two insane blocks, but Ludlow, Tate, and Charlie Mahoney have been absolutely tearing it up and just have been playing extremely well offensively. Can't forget Charlie Jones. How do you feel like Ludlow has been playing this entire game so far, Nick? I mean, Ludlow obviously up on this Jesuit squad seven by seven points, 20 to 13. Uh, great threes from Tate Mahoney and Charlie Mahoney, the brother duo, as we've said, but obviously can go either way here. Uh, not much separation between these two schools. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's a seven-point game, but it's been extremely hard fought by both teams. Prep just seems like they just need to get it together offensively because of the likes of people like Charlie Jones. Insane defensive presence. Been locking up Will Kane, the point guard. They've had history. Some chirps are flying back and forth. And we're just going to be seeing a whole lot of it. Still still kind of friendly competition as uh, as Charlie Jones and Will Kane were just talking to each other at that break. Some smiles on their faces. Here's Kane driving right side. Kane trying to go up, and he and makes he, it work. What a move there by Kane. Very acrobatic. Gets by the tough defense of Charlie Jones and puts up his first two points of the game. Mahoney against Alvarez. It's, poor, it's Davis Watley. Fouled by Garrity. Ha that was a very light foul, it seems, there on the Jesuits from Garrity. And it is two shots. In the first game of this holiday career, uh, holiday classic, it was uh, it was Notre Dame and Fairfield taking home the first game, so they will advance to the championship against the winner of these two in the holiday classic. Score of 63 to 58, a win against Fairfield Ward. But yeah, that was a big game. Yeah. Porter Davis Waitley getting the first one to go. 21 15, six point game. Waitley on the second one. 
and he gets the bounce. Waitley drains both of those. Stocknoff to Kane. Kane driving, not driving, walking the ball up. Here's Alvarez, Kane for three. Deep three. Off the mark. Charlie Jones was not playing as tight of defense there, but Kane unfortunately does not get the bounce. Here's Tate Mahoney, center of the court. He's pushed away, Stockinoff takes it away from him, and then Mahoney takes it right back. Timeout. Wait, was that Ludlow. a- Oh, timeout, I thought he called a tech. Timeout, Ludlow. That could have been. No, it was a technical foul. It was a tech. It's on Oh, Stocknoff. Unfortunately on Stocknoff, Mahoney gets to take both of these here. He gets the first one to go with ease. Gets the bounce on the second one. But that was an unusual tech. I think it's the fact that he talked to the ref after uh, after after the ball was taken back because he uh, he went he stole the ball from Mahoney, but Mahoney stole it right back from him. So I assume that's what it was on, but a little bit of a interesting slash weird technical foul call there. I can agree with that one. But we've seen this in the past that uh they I don't know. The the refs are not going to take much uh, much talk back from the players. They are not. Here's Jones against Lamik Black. Guarded tightly. It's num number 35. The unknown man. The unknown man. What? Two two seconds. Davis Watley over the backboard, out of bounds. Wow. The now introduction that's, that's of the, sh the introduction of the, the the shot clock into high school basketball has been huge. Yeah. Has been absolutely huge. The 35 seconds does not give a lot of time for these boys to do what they've been doing for a long time. On the ground it's Jones and Lenny Black jump ball possession the Jesuits, but that means the possession arrow will go to Ludlow who are in the bonus. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not too sure who number 35 is. Garrity passing it to Lameek. Lameek getting locked up by Charlie Jones. Running around, giving it to Callahan. Callahan gives it to Alvarez. And that was a great backdoor cut there by Cooper Callahan after the pass from Nick Alvarez to Lameek Black, too. Curve Callahan. Charlotte, Tate Mahoney taking it down the court currently. Driving in. There's Mahoney finding Jones. That was a big defensive play there by Lucas Kiger, stripping the ball away from Charlie Jones. Kiger. Kiger there. Foul, Jesuit possession. Seems like foul on Charlie Jones. John Garrity turn it in. Here's Lamique Black. Lamique. Lamique, big cut. And that's a Ooh. foul on Timmy O'Neill, or Charlie Jones, it looks like. Big foul on Charlie Jones. Lameek went down a little. Yeah, it was a Timmy little hard with the with the foul charge. But Lameek here, Black about to take those foul shots. Lameek. That's good for Lameek. The lead is now brought down to six. 24, Ludlow, 18 Jesuits. That's good. Again, big free throw there by Meek Black. 
Jones taking up the court. Pass. Jones. Jones guarded by Lameek Black, who's playing a lot of physical defense. Tate, and that's a travel Trap. on Tate Mahoney. Great defense there by Cooper Callahan, preventing and absolutely shutting down Tate Mahoney. Number 35 is Jake Medor. There it is. Jake Medor, we figured it out. <laughs> yeah, Nick, how do you feel about the performance of the freshman, Timmy O'Neill? I haven't seen him a lot in the second quarter. But, yeah, I don't know. There's O'Neill's been playing great, a freshman. If you hear that laughing in the background, that's uh, that's some of our alumni, including my brother. So that's great. We have Charlie Jones, Timmy yep. O'Neill, Tate Mahoney, Charlie Mahoney, and number 14, Mr. Castro. Juan Trebina Castro. Here's Callahan and Lameek Black. Left side, Garrity. Stolen away, Mahoney up the floor to Jones. Jones trying to make a move. Finding O'Neal, thought it was out of bounds. Everyone on the prep bench is pleading for out of bounds. Shabina, it's Shabina Castro moving inside on Garrity, no good. Black with the rebound. Shabina Castro hasn't had a lot of, um, oh! Lameek Black inside. Lameek! And he gets it. Oh my! Getting it through two defenders. What a play. Lay him. Shot oh clock, my gosh. Shot clock is off. 20 seconds left. Let's see, let's see what Ludlow draws up here. Right side O'Neal. Right corner. Mahoney. And it's knocked away. Ludlow retains possession. What a play there by Lameek Black. Absolutely saucing up. Both of his defenders, he's, he's almost had a few ankle breakers today. Yeah. I mean, that was a great cut again by O'Neal. O'Neal, the freshman presence is insane from Timmy O'Neal, number 15. Here's Tate Mahoney, 16 seconds, guarded by Callahan. Jones, guarded by Scott. Tate Mahoney, guarded by Callahan. Fighting his brother, Charlie. Mahoney driving in. No good, Scott. It's a block on Garrity. A blocking foul. I believe he may have been in the restricted zone. Feet in the restricted zone was the Gar call. Garrity seeming a little, a little winded after that, after that blocking foul. He's limping off a little. Three seconds left, and Prep will have if he misses, he they're in the bonus, so he'll have one and one, I believe. Or no, he'll have two because it was a shooting foul. He gets the first one, 25-21. 25-21, here we go, Mahoney again. Seems like Garrity is talking it over with the coaches currently. Doesn't seem very well. Feeney checks in. Seems like he got hit, but he's gonna sit down. He's Seems like there are only four, five, now five prep players on the court. Mahoney, that's good. Mahoney's knocked down. Oh no. It's Ludlow ball getting a miscue. little miscue. Yeah, miscommunication there through Lameek. Here's Trebina Castro. Three seconds left. We're all we're all waiting for halftime. But here we go. It's Charlie Mahoney inside. Trebina Castro, two seconds. He loses it. Oh, and that. <laughs> Kiger. <laughs> Kiger tried to flip that towards toward the full court shot, but not very close. That ends the first half with the score Ludlow 26, Prep 21. We'll be back after a break. Keep, thanks for watching Fairfield Prep Basketball.
So today I was here uh, speaking on the No Place for Hate initiative that we have going on at Prep um, and just talking about how my experiences through football and, and being in different locker rooms and playing all these years has, has shown me the importance of being a man for others and, uh, and building relationships with other people so that we can go out into the community and, uh, and, and be, try to be a force for good instead of hate. You know, I loved my time here at Prep. Um, I have friends for life, brothers for life from this place. I still keep in touch with faculty, staff, teachers, um, counselors. This is truly home for me, and so it's an honor to be back here and, uh, and be able to see everybody again and, and talk to the guys. And I think our culture here at Prep is what I love the most about it, is uh, you know, how we're all men for others. And I think that's just such a, a simple but important task that we're charged with, uh, to go out into the community and, and truly um, try to act with love and, and uh, in a way to serve other people and so that's that's what I try to do and, uh, and strive to do and I know everybody else here does the same. I think it's uh, a very unique part of our culture that ties us all together. To be an SEC Scholar Athlete means you know hard work both on the water and off the water, finding balance of time um, in between schoolwork and practice. As a coxswain, I'm on the water, not rowing, but instead helping the rowers find technique, motivation, and steering the boat. So being a coxswain means that I have to do a little extra homework, have to watch film. I started my freshman year under the guidance of Coach Ed, and he really saw something in me and helped me progress as a coxswain. I sort of took it upon myself to keep learning, keep progressing in the sport, and eventually I landed up here. In season, it's a lot of getting home, and getting things done as soon as possible, whether it's you know writing down notes after practice, talking about what we did on the water, what guys need to improve on, and then after that, I set aside the rest of the night to just do homework, study, review, and if we don't have a lift the next morning that I have to be at, I wake up at five in the morning, get work done. So it's finding the balance between health, schoolwork, and athletics. First six weeks with Philip has been honestly very impressive to watch because he's taken on the role as Varsity Coxon, he's in the 1V, he's the captain of the team as a senior, but he's also got four guys underneath him who are learning how to be Coxons from him, from me, and he's taking charge of how to teach them, how to make them grow, but also handling the day-to-day -day things here, where he knows when the boat needs to launch, he knows how to run a warm-up, and he does really everything you expect from a Coxon without needing to be asked, which is the most impressive part. He's really good at working with guys one-on-one. -on -one. So especially when he's working with those younger coxswains, teaching them how, he's, how they should take on the river, how they should take on a race, how they should work with other rowers. But also when he's in a boat, I mean, he knows how to communicate individually for what a guy needs to hear. I think a big thing with a coxswain is you can't just deliver the same message the same way to everyone, and he knows how to adapt that and be able to be a leader, not just for the freshmen, but also for the seniors who have been around for a while and do know what they're talking about, and he's able to still communicate things they need to work on in a way that's productive. Everything we have and enjoy at PrEP is a gift. We're surrounded by the gifts, great and small, that come from our parents, our grandparents, our friends, and most of all, our PrEP brothers. Everything around us is a gift, flowing from deep gratitude that leads to generosity. And every club brother is so much more than just a student. Perfect prep is much more than just a normal high school. Prep ignites the fire within us all. Our young men are being guided by their coaches and their teachers and their mentors to become young men of conscience, compassion, and character. Uh, to me, being a scholar athlete really means combining academics and athletics and really being able to put it together and 
be my best self at all those months. It's been really great in the leadership role. I've never really experienced anything like this before, but it's been a really eye-opening experience to see what it's like to have people look up to you and be a leader among my teammates. I never really saw myself in this position because I was kind of like a shy freshman who didn't really talk to many people, but now I feel like I really found my friends and I feel like this team is like a family to me at this point and we're gonna go through it all together. So Matt's a great kid. He's uh, been a extremely valuable asset to the team. A lot of the players look to him through his actions. He's been someone that we can count on and rely on in big moments. He's someone that leads through his actions. I think everyone can see him uh, and how he shows up early, how he takes his academics seriously. And as a person, he's just exceptional. He's uh, been a great kid, not only to his teammates, but to his community and the ones around him. Being a man for others here at Prep, it's opened my eyes to whole new experiences. Uh, I've been working with underprivileged people, people with disabilities, and it's really changed my perspective on how people in our community are struggling and we, we can do whatever it takes to help them and make the world a better place. Being a man of prep means being a man for others. A man for others is not someone who thinks of themselves first. A man for others is not the type of person who takes up a task in search of personal gain. A man for others is the kind of man who... Hello everybody, we are back at Leo D. Mahoney Arena for Prep vs. Ludlow. If you weren't here, it is 26-21, Fairfield Ludlow leading by five. And it currently has been an extremely close game defensively and offensively. Well, I bet you couldn't see that. But a, a, a couple very, very notable people that we should be looking out for is Charlie Jones, Tate Mahoney, and Charlie Mahoney. Charlie Jones has been playing insane defensively. The brother duo has been playing extremely good offensively and have been leading the entire Ludlow force and for prep we have seen a lot out of mr nick alvarez huge player and jack stocknoff who had two lebron-esque giant blocks on ludlow last quarter and stocknoff got a tech last quarter and he is and he uh, is currently getting better relations with the ref as he just talked to him clearing up the air Shrabina Castro starting off this second half of basketball. Over to Jones. Jones is going to bring it up the court. Outside to, oh, air ball there from from Mr. Waitley. Davis Waitley, Porter Davis Waitley. Here's Kane, driving in, Kane. Kick out Scott for three. Off the mark there. Huge rebound by Alvarez, puts it back up, and one! Holy, what a great put back and offensive rebound there from Nick Alvarez, getting that and one. That's definitely making prep hype. Alvarez at the line. Free throw is good. Jesuits cut the lead to two. On an N1 from Alvarez. Here's Jones. Kane guarding him viciously. Jones gets to the left elbow. To Charlie Mahoney. Mahoney to Tate Mahoney. Mahoney driving in. And blocked away by Stocknoff. And it's oh. out. Oh, and it looks like That Mahoney. was a big bump there by Matt Feeney on Charlie Mahoney. Here's Stocknoff. Oh. In and out. Just out there. And that is Ludlow Ball. Unfortunate miss free there from Jack Stocknoff. Don't really see a lot of those. He has sort of been the incarnation of Ray Allen recently. So, very unfortunate. Giant defensive play in Kaner. That's Giant good. three there, bringing the lead 
on to the Jesuits, up by one. Lil Kane getting by Jones and making him pay for giving him space. Here's Sherbina Castro over to Davis Waitley. Waitley loses the ball to Jones. Inside to Waitley. Against Stocknoff, going up, misses. Rebound though by Davis Waitley, who's who falls back 30 seconds. Fresh new shot clock for the Falcons. Here is Jones. Jones. Big defensive play there by Alvarez and a little bit saucy from Stocknoff. Stocknoff seems like he wants it, but it gets denied by Mr. Porter Davis Waitley. Here is Kane with the inbound. Stocknoff. Alvarez. Driving inside, misses the layup. Battling rebound, Charlie Mahoney. Up to his brother, Tate Mahoney. Tate Mahoney, the senior, kicking out to Charlie Jones inside. Jump stop inside to Sherbina Castro. Right side of the paint to Porter Davis Waitley against Stocknoff inside, and that's good. Giant body there on Stocknoff from Mr. Porter Davis Waitley. And what a deep, what a great defensive play there by Tate Mahoney. Getting it up, draws the foul, but unfortunately he does not make it. No M1. Here's Sherbina Castro with the inbound. Ludlow lead, 28-27. Floats over Alvarez, no good from Davis Waitley. Sabina Castro. Three-pointer by Sherbina Castro, no good. Rebound by Waitley again. Battling against Alvarez. That's a foul call. Foul on Alvarez on Porter uh, Davis Waitley. Um, very peculiar call, but ref saw something and it's a foul. He's up for two. I believe the last time he went up, he made both of them. So hopefully uh, we'll see that again. There is the first one. And here is Davis Waitley on the second one. Loses the dribble on the uh, free throw. Here we go. Davis Waitley puts it up, and that's good. 30-27. to 27. Ludlow and Prep going bad at Back to back. Here we go. Stocknoff. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Stocknoff right side. Here's Feeney driving in. Out of bounds, tipped away. Ludlow ball. Or prep ball, rather. Kane to inbound it. Kane inbounding it. Can't find anyone, just throws it up. Stocknov mosses it. Oh, but big, big defensive play there by Charlie Jones, stripping the ball and causing it on Jack Stocknov. Love the ball. Lameek Black and Cooper Callahan check in for Matt Feeney and Jack Stocknov. Here's Sherbina Castro. Inside, Davis Waitley puts it up Great in. Great moves there and ball movement from Ludlow. Tay Mahoney drives him, passes it straight to his brother. I mean, Charlie Mahoney does not. Here's Nick Alvarez inside, kicks Cooper Callahan. Kaner, Will Kane driving in, kick out. Alvarez for three. It's Just off. Thought he was bumped maybe. Oh, Kane loses it. Callahan and Kane go at it. Oh, and it's stripped away and it's out Back. of bounds, tipped away. Good hustle play by Cooper Callahan. You know, Cooper Callahan, he's just so fast and agile, he's able to get to every single part of the floor. Absolute defensive menace. Here we go. Jones to inbound it. Tate Mahoney for three. 
Off the mark. Rebound by Kane in Talvez. Over to Callahan. Callahan, they have numbers. The Jesuits have numbers. Kicking back out to Lameek Black. Eurostep blocked oh. away by Shrabina Castro. Alvarez driving in. Tate Mahoney all over that. Kicking back out to Kane. Resetting. 16 on the shot clock. Here's Scott inside to Alvarez. Alvarez, fade away. No good, Just offside soft. rim. Just could off not, there. Could not get it over Shabina Castro. Here is number one, Tate, jo Tate Mahoney, rather. Inside. Foul on the floor. Ludlow possession. Ludlow up by five. And if the Jesuits don't figure something out soon, this could be problematic. And it's Andrew Wong, number 51, the sophomore checking in. <laughs> and the bomb squad loving it. Which is an interesting move for the Jesuits. Maybe want to get, get some size. Charlie Mahoney fouled by Kane. He will shoot two. Yeah, and you know, Andrew Wong getting into the game, the only, or this, no, the third sophomore on this prep team, you know, he's very big, he'll move, and he is lethal on offense. Really got to look out for Andrew Wong. He gets to bounce. Alvarez checking out for Cooper Callahan. An interesting lineup. Quite very, very young. All underclassmen except for Cooper Callahan, the lone senior out there. And that's good too. 34-27, largest lead for Ludlow. 34-27. Charlie Here's Jones is completely relentless on Will Kane, pressing him at every single possession. Callahan floats it, no good. Tipped out by Wong over to Callahan, finding Lemmy Black. Coach for Pally calling out orders and plays. Black finding Kane over to Wong. Back to Lameek Black. To Kiger. Over to Callahan. To Black. Kick out. 13 on the shot clock. Callahan getting past. Floats it up and no good. Rebound Tate Mahoney. That was just insane defense there by Ludlow. And, you know, you had to try to get something there. Charlie Mahoney for three. That's good! Great performance so far for Ludlow in the second half, bringing the former lead of up one, the Jesuits, to a 10-point lead. The Jesuits want a timeout, and they need to talk things over. Yeah, you know, that's a giant three there for the Falcons, bringing the lead from seven to 10. Some chirps flying from the Falcons bomb squad saying, why so quiet to prep? Here is that replay of that Charlie Mahoney three-pointer. Kiger tried to defend it as best he could, but Charlie Mahoney, a vicious shooter, and absolutely nothing but nylon on that three-pointer. Yeah, and you know, with Charlie Mahoney, you can't really do a whole lot on that three-pointer because of how deadly he is on the outside and how tall and lengthy it is he is. You can't really get up there without putting your entire body on the line. And once you do that, he's already passed. So you can't do too much against Charlie and Tate Mahoney. Couple guys we haven't seen today, maybe surprisingly, Luke Cristadero, Devin Brenner, and Jack Short. None of them have, uh, have gotten too much, have gotten any playing time tonight. Yeah, I'm unfortunately, the story for uh, Jack Shore is that his knee um, had, pops out of place a lot, and, you know, it's not very smart for him to, you know, keep playing. Oh, he has a brace on his knee over there on the bench. Oh, and it's Callahan. Oh, what a snag. Punch. From Arlos Ollinger. Hmm. But Cooper Callahan has that football on him and is able to just absolutely rake that ball. It's Kane. 
who replaced Andrew, a pretty new lineup out there for the Jesuits. Alvarez to Black. Black driving in, kick out Kiger for three. Off the mark there. Oh, and Alvarez, huge rebound, puts it up. No good. Another. Alvarez still fighting, and that's Ludlow possession. And this is problematic for the Jesuits. They have not been able to get much, if anything, going here in the third quarter. Definitely extremely unfortunate. They really need it as the game is dwindling down. And they just really haven't been able to get a whole lot in the second half. Here is Shabina Castro outside. Back to Arlo Solinger. Whoa. And it's Callahan taking it away from Shabina Castro. Tiger thought about pulling up. Finding Lameek Black. Over to Kane, who has the younger Timmy O'Neill on him. Kane, Kane big in. body, Sam. And that's tipped right back out to Alvarez. Kiger for three. Off the mark. That's who you want to get the ball to, the shooter, Lucas Kiger. Unfortunately, he's been off the mark in the second half, but he definitely will heat up as time goes on. They're bringing back in number three, Jack Stocknoff to try to get some points on the bar board for the Jesuits. Charlie Mahoney pulls up, no good. In and out, Alvarez, who's take. oh, Timmy. Oh, Timmy O'Neill almost just took that away from Alvarez. But Lameek Black comes to the aid of Nick Alvarez. Black coming oh. in, and it's a block on Charlie Mahoney. <laughs> we see <laughs> Brandon Yu helping up Lameek Black, such a great guy. <laughs> Lameek at this free throw line. And we haven't seen a whole lot of Lameek as we did it compared to the Xavier game. Gets the first one to go. Got some. Got a point on the board so far. Yeah, really hoping we see more of Lameek and his just defensive and offensive presence on the court because, you know, he can really be a game changer once he gets hot. He misses the second one. Ludlow ball which I thought that was off of Davis Waitley, but nonetheless, Scott checks in for Kane. Really need this defense here for the Jesuits, and it seems like they have a lot of very good defensive players in. Oh, Tate Mahoney hits the oh. three in Lameek's face. That was absolutely disgusting. Looked at the basket for a quarter of a second as Durande. Alvarez driving in, kick out. Callahan for three. In and out. Seems, seems prep ball. Just off on Tate Mahoney. Unfortunate three there. That did not go in for Cooper Callahan. He's been draining those today. Finding Lamy, corner three for three. Off the mark again. And it's Lamik getting the offensive rebound. Driving in, putting it up. Oh, no good. Alvarez is fouled. Sh shooting foul. 40 to 28. And the Jesuits, still a lot of basketball to play, but the Jesuits need to probably get this just down to 10. Here's Alvarez at the line. Gets the first one to go with ease. Checking in is Sherbina Castro. He replaces Arlo Solinger. And it looks like Garrity's injured because we have not seen him in the game this second half. Here's Alvarez. That's off the mark. Callahan with the offensive Callahan, rebound. Callahan, big body Stocked quarter. Off. Over to Lameek. Finding, finding Scott. They need Porter one Davis. big bucket to get this game going for them again. Porter Davis seems like he's in pain, hurt his wrist. Lameek getting locked up by Charlie Jones. Lameek driving in, floater, no good, blocked by Davis Waitley. And it's Tate Mahoney getting it up the court to Sherbina Castro. And no good at the buzzer. At the end of the third, a huge quarter for Ludlow as they take a 40 to 29 lead on prep. We'll be back, or no, we're not gonna go anywhere, I don't believe. Well, we're just going to stay here until this fourth quarter. Tommy, what do you think's the what do you think's the game plan for the Jesuits for I, this last quarter? We really just need to 
make some buckets out there, to say it simply. I mean, we just need to get some of those threes, those very easy threes that, we, that are left wide open. And we really just need to capitalize on a lot of things. Um, especially defensively, whenever we have the ability to, um, we can't give up these threes to the Mahoney brothers. They've been act, they've been absolutely going off. It's um, it's very, it's been giving Ludlow the lead that they have right now. What about you, Nick? Um, I mean, nothing really to work on for Ludlow. They're playing probably the best game I've seen in a while for a high school team. They've hit a lot of shots. Uh, Tate Mahoney with that dis vicious and disgusting no-look three ball, and he turns away, puts the three down, and, I mean, nothing more to say. Tate Mahoney and Charlie Mahoney going off in this game, but for prep, it's really about getting something going. We've see we saw that last possession, a un I hate to say it, a pretty ugly possession. I mean, a couple open-looking threes, just rimming out, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, I, I I hate to agree, but I mean, it seems like it's true. Prep has not been playing the best, very sloppy. But we, I mean, as we in every single sport, we are a second half team. Set in football, happened in the Xavier game. We usually come back from a lot of these things, so we'll see what what happens. It's Kane, guarded by Timmy O'Neill. Inside to Nick Alvarez, finding Kane. Driving in, Kane, great little, and he misses the floater. Alvarez up again, no good, rebound. Oh. Porter Davis Waitley. Charlie Jones, Jones got hand the face on the way down. Charlie Mahoney passes it to Timmy O'Neill, running point. Inside, Charlie Mahoney, no good, rebound, Lameek Black. Lameek driving right side. He's going to keep it up on Charlie Jones, kicking back out to Scott. Scott driving in, and it's a foul on. Seems like Charlie Jones. That's his third foul of the game. Here's Lameek Black. He's going to kick it back out to Kane. And that's tipped away. Timmy O'Neill guarded by Kane. And he cannot finish. But it's Alvarez ripping the ball down. Alvarez playing very ferocious. Swung over to Lameek Black. And kicking Stocknoff. Kane driving in. And he's fouled. Shooting foul for Kane. So not the most clean basketball ever, but... It seems to be working for uh, Ludlow, but Prep's got to control the game more, I think. 100%, just play at their own pace. I mean, they haven't been playing absolutely terrible in this second half, as it has only been a minute. However, um, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of good things here. Kane hits the first one, 10-point game. If he cuts this to nine, the Jesuits are in business. Here's Kane, second free throw. And it's good. And that might be the way to beat this Ludlow team. Get to the foul line and hit your shots. 100%. You know, Ludlow has been having a lot of foul shots in this game. And I feel like that was a great observation. Prep itself hasn't had, like, many at all. I mean, that's sometimes how it goes in basketball. You have to find a team's weakness or find a strategy and just explode. Oh, oh beautiful oh. Euro step that, from Charlie Mahoney. That was dirty. That was absolutely disgusting there from the junior, number two, Charlie Mahoney. Callahan finding Alvarez. Alvarez driving, and he's fouled. Got smacked by four different players, which is pretty insane that it takes four Ludlow players to take on the one Nick Alvarez. But Alvarez is a very skilled and very, you know, I mean, I guess there's not he's much huge. more to say. He, Dude, big, big player. Nick Alvarez is a very giant player, and, you know, he... I mean, he's big. I would not want to go up against him in any sport. Here's yeah. Alvarez. Gets the first one. It's 42-32, 10-point game again. They just got to limit this Ludlow team's, uh, you know, playmaking, I guess. There's not much more to say. 6.37 left in this game. Alvarez no good. 
on the second one. That's been kind of the story of the day. Not, I mean, fine, I don't know. It's, it's not going great for prep. Down by 10. Lamique Black playing playing up on Timmy O'Neill. Cooper Callahan steals it away. Good defensive effort here from Fairfield Prep. Jump ball, possession Ludlow. But that changes the arrow. And the Jesuits will get the next jump ball if that occurs. O'Neal driving in. Kane guarding him very closely. Nick Alvarez guarding Tate Mahoney, and he blocks him, but it's a foul on the floor. Seems like it might be a number three, Jack Stockton. The second half, they've just been struggling to, uh, the Jesuits have been struggling to limit the Falcons. Yeah, they definitely have. You know, Charlie, miss, uh, number one and two, Charlie Tate Mahoney have absolutely been tearing it up. In this second and half, he in this game the first especially. One. Damn. You don't really see a lot of that with the Mahoney brothers. He misses the second one, too. Callahan driving in. Oh, and miscommunication. Lodlow possession, and these are these costly turnovers that are biting the Jesuits. They're just like, mm, this is very frustrating to watch as, you know, as anyone really on the prep side of things. 100%, 100%, couldn't agree more. Timmy O'Neill taking it down the court. Inside. It's a charge on Charlie Mahoney. He's got to watch. He was out of control going inside and just could not finish around Cooper Callahan. And Callahan, good steady feet, draws that charge. Huge. I mean, Prep just loves the charge. And, you know, it's something that's very hard to go against because if you're too careless, there's a body right there. Stocknoff. Kane guarded tightly by O'Neal. No good again. And it's Charlie Mahoney passing it up to Timmy O'Neal. Jesuits have got to do something, and it's Ludlow ball knocked off of Kane. Will Kane, 15 on 15. Five minutes left. Tommy, I know it's not seemed too much, but it is high school basketball. How do you see this going? I mean, this was the same for football, same for lacrosse. Anything can really happen here. And can't really expect too much, but the way that Ludlow has been playing, it seems like that, I mean, it's going to be a very tough, it's going to be extremely tough for Prep to come back. It's a foul, and it's Juan Sherbina Castro going to the line. Sherbina Castro at the line. He nails the first one. The lefty. The lefty? Sherbina Castro has been playing a very big role defensively in this game so Miss far, but misses a second. Sh well short on the second one for Sherbina Castro. Lameek trying to drive in and gets it to go. There it is. Lameek very good at getting those contested layups, especially over somebody as tall as Tate Mahoney. which is Alvarez. Now it's Stocknoff guarding Arlo Solinger inside to Sherbina Castro. Hey! And he blocks it, and it's Ludlow possession. A good read there from Stocknoff. Stocknoff. Almost lands on Sherbina Castro's back, but it's the ref calls it clean. But it's Charlie Mahoney for three. No good. Alvarez, good box out Whoa. on Sherbina Castro. Kick out Kane for three. Oh, just off there from Kaner. Nine-point game. 
The Jesuits just need three three-pointers, but which would seem light, but the Jesuits have not been great at hitting those. Arlo Solinger travels. Travel there by Solinger. Sophomore. Here we go, it's Lamique Black. Lameek driving in again on Tate Mahoney. Cannot hit it. And it's rebounded by Shrabina Castro. Baseball pass ahead to Timmy O'Neill inside. And he misses. That's Charlie Mahoney, but he goes the line. 3.38 left in the basketball game, and it's 43-34. And this is not looking good for the Jesuits. Timmy O'Neill just been such a selfless player, being in the right places at the right time. I mean, I feel like he has a very promising Ludlow career, uh, Ludlow High School basketball career, as he gets a bigger and bigger role down the line. That's Mahoney not going to miss from the foul line. Kiger coming in for Callahan. Maybe the Jesuits hoping to get some threes going here, which would be a deadly weapon if Kiger can start hitting them. Mahoney on the second one, misses in and out. And it's Lameek going to push it up the floor, 33-35 left. It's Kane inside. Inside to Stocknoff. Kiger for three. Hits bang. it. Bang. Lucas Kiger. And Giant cuts it to three there. Cuts it to seven points. Yeah, we definitely needed that. Tim Mahoney on Lucas Kiger. Foul and, he hits and, it and one. one. Giant play there by Ludlow. Tate Mahoney absolutely tearing it up here tonight. No good on the free throw. Nine point game, so not impossible. Three minutes left. Kane, Omeek. He's blocked, but foul he's there. Serbina Castro. Lameek, wrist hurting. Very unfortunate. Lameek is a giant part of this team, especially in the second half. Can't tell if that's his right or left wrist there. I think that's his left. And we have to see some big plays out here from Prep in this next 253. We have to see some big threes from Lucas Kiger. We have to see some great ball handling and possessions by Kaner. We have to see some great no defense. No good. Alvarez with the rebound, though. Finding Lameek. Black inside against and thought that was a foul maybe, but the ref's not gonna give it to him. Unfortunately not. Here's Charlie Jones. Jones guarded by Kane. Timmy O'Neill guarded by Kiger. Mahoney slips. Mahoney down. And it's inside to his brother Tate. Good recovery there. But Kiger tries to take the charge. <laughs> Bringing the lead down up, up to, to 10. 10. Charge. Charge there. Charlie Mahoney. And Ludlow have proven that they are not afraid of prep. And they have taken charges, hitting the big shot, taking the big shot. It's Tate Mahoney driving. No, he's going to kick it out to Charlie Jones. Two minutes left, and this is going to be very tough. Extremely, but we've seen Prep do it before. Hopefully, we'll see it again. Almost a strip there from Cooper Callahan. Seems like they're holding the ball, just Timmy running down time. Yeah, Timmy O'Neill inside, and it's, it's just. Charlie Mahoney again, 50 to 38. 
huge point differential. Cooper Callahan for going three. for the three. And he it's hits good. It. That brings the ball game down to nine. I mean, it's just very tough still, but hey, giving them some daylight. Yeah, 100%. You know, there is some hope here for prep, and we're really going to have to rely on the shooting from Fairfield Prep here. We really have to contain Tate and Charlie Mahoney because they've been absolutely tearing it up today and have been tearing up all season. The brotherly duo going absolutely crazy in this game. 50 to 41 now. The Jesuits game plan probably just try to force a turnover if you can't foul a guy like Timmy O'Neill who might not be comfortable shooting foul shots. And then, uh, you know, just foul the young... I, I think this is the, the goal in every basketball game. Foul the youngest guy on the court. Yeah, because, you know, Timmy O'Neill, the freshman, even though he's been playing extremely well, we haven't seen a whole lot out of him offensively other than his, his absolute great... Uh, vision of the court. He hasn't. We haven't seen a lot of shots come out from him, so I believe that's a great observation. Both in the bonus here, as the timeouts are running out. Seems like we have a very defensive crew out there with the likes of Matt Feeney, Nick Alvarez, Alex Scott, Cooper Callahan, and Unique Black. Timmy O'Neill. Oh, he traveled. traveled. Tay oh Mahoney goodness. travel. Seems like a lot of substitutions about to happen. Lucas Kiger and Will Kane coming in. Getting all their shooters in. <laughs> trying to get any, trying to Time get an out open shot. Yes, 100% getting the <laughs> shot out. Oh, they put in Andrew Wong too to, if a rebound does not go Prep's way, to maybe try to hit it back out to, to the top of the key. Because we've seen this before, especially a couple years ago now. It was in the spring. Prep and NFA were playing at, at actually War Gym when Mahoney was being built. And Ryan Prezano hit three three-pointers in the final minute. And uh, I don't know if you were there, Tommy, but it was quite the spectacular ending. The buzzer beater to end the game. Devastatingly, I was not there. I was studying for a Miss Lombardi quest. They, one of my biggest regrets in my prep career. Yes, but it was it was mentioned on uh, ESPN, I believe the top 10 for the yeah. week. And, you know, Prez, great legacy here at Fairfield Prep. Went absolutely crazy, and he's hopefully we'll at, see a little bit of that. He's now at Wake Forest playing baseball. A great three-sport athlete. Football, basketball. Alvarez. And Alvarez Sorry. Kane for three. And that's and he drains it. Oh my goodness. Six point game here. Get some defense out here. Get some numbers. They're tripling the ball. They're getting locked up. Charlie Jones. Oh, oh. Timeout. Time Ludlow. Bye, oh. Mr. O'Daly. Heard he chirped me. Called me a nerd last week. Did not like that at all. True story. True story. Just two absolutely crazy plays from prep. Six points in the past 20 seconds. I see a little bit of T-Mac and Reggie Miller action out here. And this is actually especially good because Ludlow cannot call another timeout. They will be called for excessive timeouts. A foul will be called a technical and the Jesuits will have free throws if that occurs. A minute 13, so plenty of time left. Would you agree, Tommy? Yeah, 100%. I mean, a lot of big plays can be made here in this minute and 13 seconds. I mean, as I said, like in football, cross, and a lot this game, anything can happen. And uh, we'll definitely be seeing all of that going here in this next minute and 13. I mean, you could argue anything, but I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to jinx it, so I'm not trying to predict what I think is gonna happen. But yeah. this is a great group they have out here for prep: Cooper Callahan, Alex Scott, Will Kane, Lamique Black, and Nick Alvarez. And it's both Mahoney's, Charlie Jones, Sherbina Castro, and Sean. Uh, oh, Timmy O'Neill loses it. Timmy O'Neill. 
Oh, but he picks it back up. And they got to get it across the floor. And it's oh, back. It's, it's back. Wait. No, no shot. No. Timmy O'Neal may be him. Oh, my goodness, O'Neal. Timmy O'Neal loses it twice and absolutely hucks it down <laughs> to, what was that, Charlie Mahoney? Yep. And now it is a foul on Prep Tay Mahoney, 4-2. A minute left, they burn 23 seconds on the clock. Lucas Kiger getting ready to check back in because they need a three here. And he misses it. Oh my goodness, could it be real? This is big, this is extremely big. Is Lucas Kiger gonna turn to the next Ray Allen incarnate? And he, and he nails And he drains it. the second one. Lameek, got to go. 59 seconds left. Seven-point game. Going to try to find the open man. He Lameek. slips, and he's fouled. Fouled on the ground. We are in the bonus. So, they so will that will be two. One and one. They will go to the line. Juan Sherbino with his second foul. And this is a very exciting end of the, for the second game. Here we go, Lameek. Hits the second one, hits the first one rather. Drains it. 51-45, just a six point game. The next one will make it five. And he hits there the second one. There it is. One. Five point game, two possessions, 51 seconds left. Falcons in the lead. They're guarding everyone very closely. <laughs> and it's turnover! Nick Alvarez! 45 seconds left. Oh my goodness, this is exactly what they needed. Kane inside. Kane getting it up! And he hey! it. Oh my goodness! What Three a point lady. game! Three point lady. game! Oh, oh no, but the chair picked it. That was yammed. Yammed there by Charlie Mahoney. Very unfortunate. Got. Hey! And one! And one! Oh my goodness! Holy! That brings it into three, but unfortunately, we have to look at the shot clock here. There is no shot clock. <laughs> and this could make it a two point game, and then we're gonna hope for a miracle. Oh my goodness. Here Lameek. we go. Lameek at the line. For the shot. And he, he misses, misses it! And he misses out! Right out. No! 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 <laughs> <laughs> on the floor! It's yeah, on the floor! Time out! Time out! Time no, out! No. <laughs> oh my Time goodness! Out. Time out, love, love. That was, wait. <laughs> the bomb squad's going nuts. That was a, this is a very exciting game, folks. 53-50. That was, that was a crazy night of events. That just went on right there. Sorry for the unprofessionalness of me just screaming no. I did not <laughs> want to see it. I did not want to see something back happen there. But talking it over, I mean, there has to be a big play. There's only 17 seconds left. Ludlow has the ball, so they can just hold it out as much as they want. But the Jesuits have proven to be able to get the ball away from Ludlow. But we'll see what happens here. The Jesuits have scored 10 points in a minute. That's crazy. And as these, as these two teams are cross-town cross rivals, neither team wants to lose to the other. 100%, because, I mean... I'm in a lot of these group shafts. There will be some beef between some of the boys. You know, it won't be, won't be great. O'Neal to take the inbound. Scott guarding Mahoney. And, and, oh my goodness! Intercepted. Oh! Alex Scott. Callahan. Seven seconds. Time, time out, out crap. Oh time my out, goodness. Crap. What a time out. <laughs> oh Three points, eight seconds left. This is oh big. Oh my goodness. This is insane. The, prep the bomb, bomb squad's, squad's going, going crazy. Nuts. Jinx. 
whole lead. Absolutely going nuts. As Nick just said, filling up the entire stadium with just so much volume. Oh my goodness, Mahoney turns it over and it's a timeout Jesuits, plenty of time. Eight seconds is plenty of time. Don't know what the bomb squad's <laughs> chanting. <laughs> I was about to say. Sound like I said, super talky, but I mean, can't really hear anything from over here. Huge eight seconds left. And Tommy, you can see I'm shaking. I am, Holy. this is insane. This is electric, very electric. I'm not gonna say anything. I, I, I don't wanna jinx anything. A lot of the shooters out here for prep. Lameek Black, Will Kane, Lucas Kiger. Yes. And they send out their, their best players too. Both Mahoney's, Davis Waitley. Oh, here we go. And it commences. For three! He shoots it! No, oh, he's off! And that's the Foul game it looks three. like. Point three seconds left on the clock. I don't know what they're saying there, but they just they stole was... the prep chant literally from us. That was a big chirp there. And he oh, misses! He misses. Oh There's no shot that this would in any case work. I don't think anyone can shoot a full court shot, but... I mean, hopefully we see it. And he drinks it. Yeah. Seems like that. No canner misses it. That's the game, y'all. Ludlow pulls it off, 54-50, knocking the Jesuits out of the winner's bracket. And Ludlow will take on Notre Dame Fairfield in the championship game of the Holiday Classic. And Fairfield Prep will meet Fairfield Ward in the consolation third place game. Thanks everyone for watching. For Nick, I am Nick Waltz here. You join alongside Tommy Berry, saying so long from the game, from the Holiday Classic, day one, final score. Uh, you see us on the camera. Final score: Ludlow 54, Fairfield Prep 50. Thanks for watching. Thank y'all. Have a nice night.